In this video presentation, we're going to look at working out the minimum internal bending radius of cables. We've been exclusively working with PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables over the first 14 weeks with my learners. And I've been asking them to put a nice smooth bend in the cable. We're now going to work out what the minimum internal bending radii can be of the cable that we select. We're going to need to use BS7671 to do so. We're going to use the on-site guide. We're going to use Appendix D table D5 in order to work out these bending radiuses. So let's look at that in the next part of the presentation. So what we've got here is a blown up version of the page in the on-site guide in Appendix D, which is for table D5. So I recommend you have that page in the on-site guide open for yourself. So we're in Appendix D, table D5 as you follow this presentation through. No point telling you the page number as we move towards the 18th edition. I expect this table to stay the same, but may move in its position on page number. So that's the page we're using in the on-site guide, which is Appendix D, Table D5. Blown up version just here. First of all, I get my students to highlight some bits on this page. So first of all, internal radii and bends in the title. I also get them to highlight the bit for overall diameter D, in millimetres, which is very important and is often misunderstood what that means. We'll look at that later on. Also, we're going to start off by doing thermoplastic PVC cables. So we're going to do PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables. So we highlight that section. We know they're non-armoured and then we're going to be looking at these here. This is the diameter of the cable and it's the diameter equal to 10 millimetres in size. So anything up to and equal to 10. So next line down is greater than 10 and up to an equal to 25, and then we're beyond 25 in this section here. So up to 10 millimeters diameter, above 10, but up to 25, and beyond 25 in that section here. The final column is the factor for, uh, to be applied for the overall diameter. So we highlight factor, and these we're gonna apply either three, four, or six, when we multiply it against the diameter of the cable later on in the presentation. So let's first of all work out the diameter of a PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable. Then we're gonna look at what factor to apply to it in order that we can create a radius. Once we create a radius, we can draw a circle. Once we draw a circle, we can work out a bending radii around it. Let's do that in the next part of the presentation. So we're gonna work out the overall diameter of PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables. And it requires us to work out the axis here, the widest part of the flat PVC cable. So we're going to measure that axis. It says here, there's a little star here, and the star down here says, for flat cables, the diameter refers to the major axes. I get my learners at the bottom of their page of the on-site guide to draw the sides of a PVC cable, put the conductors in, and then bring lines down from the major axis, the widest part of the cable, we put a D in there, so we know that's the diameter of the cable when we come back to it. So we're looking at the diameter of the cable here on our, in this case, 2.5 PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable. So we're gonna measure that diameter next. So next I'm required to measure the diameter of the cable. So the widest axis of my flat cable, I offer it down and I can see my diameter of my cable for 2.5 PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables is 10 millimeters. So the diameter of the cable is 10 millimeters. Let's make a note of that. So diameter equals 10 millimeters. Okay, so we take that, we look up here and we can see the overall diameter of the cable. We've got diameter up to and including 10 mil, has a factor to be applied of either three or two. So if we look at this cross section here to work out whether we're gonna be using two, we can see that this is for single core cables or conductors, and they're usually installed in conduits, trunkings, and ducting. We have a flat twin and CPC cables, so therefore we're going to be using a factor of three. So we've got a diameter of 10 millimeters and a factor to be applied, in this case, of three. So in order to work out our bending radius, we're gonna take the diameter of 10 and multiply it by a factor of three to give us the radius of which we're going to draw a circle at. So let's look at that in the next part of the presentation. So the radius equals the diameter, which we measured to be 10 mil, multiplied by the factor which we found in BS 7671 to be three. So radius equals diameter, which was 
10 multiplied by a factor of 3, the radius equals 30 millimetres. So what we're going to need to do is take a compass, set it with a radius of 30 millimetres, so pop it down and we're going to set it to 30 millimetres, like so. And then what we've got to do is we're going to have to use that to draw a circle. So if I put that down and I draw myself a circle with a radius, make the radius a little bit clearer to see, make a radius, and that radius there is 30 mil, and we've now created ourselves a circle, again if I make it a little bit bolder for you, like so. We've now got the internal bending radius that 2.5 cable can be at its tightest point in order to conform with BS7671. So if I take a piece of 2.5 mil cable and I was to perform a nice 90 degree bend around it, Let's see what we can set that to. I know I can't go any tighter than this. So a little bit more. Always difficult to try and keep myself out of the way at the same time I'm doing an activity. So if we position that like so, we're approaching the point of which the internal bending radius of this cable, 2.5 millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable, can be no tighter than that bending radii. We worked it out by first of all measuring the diameter of the cable to give us D, in this case 10 millimeters. We looked in BS7671 for the factor, found a factor of three, multiply 10 by three to get 30. We set a compass up with a radius of 30 mil. We've drawn a circle of which we've used half of that circle in order to work out the bending radius of the cable. And we now know that that bend conforms to BS7671, but it can't be any tighter than that. That's as tight as it can be. So that's the minimum internal bending radius that it can be. Let's repeat the process now, but this time let's use six millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables, and let's work out the minimum internal bending radius of this cable. So we're gonna repeat the process again. First of all, I need to work out the diameter of six millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable and I'll offer it down and we're looking like that is coming between 14 and 15 mil. If I'm unsure of which one to go for, let's go for 15. Let's take it up a fraction rather than down a fraction. So we're gonna go for 15 mil. So the diameter of my cable, D, diameter now is 15 millimeters. I now need to work out from the overall diameter which factor I'm going to apply. I can't use the top one because the top one's up to and including 10. So I need to go to the next one down, which is above 10, up to and including 25, giving me a factor to use this time of four. So my factor now is four. So let's go on and work out the radius of a circle and draw the circle in order that we can put a bend in six millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable. So to work out the radius, radius equals diameter, which we measured to be 15. We multiply it by a factor, which we found in BS7671 to be four. The radius now is 15 times four, which is 60 millimeters. So once again, I take my rule and I've now got to set it to 60 millimeters. My compass needs setting out to 60. And again, I then draw a circle with a radius of 60 mil. I now come all the way around. Let's make that a little easier to see. So this line here gives us the radius of 60 mil and we're gonna bend our cable around like so. Take my six millimeter squared cable, start to perform my smooth bend to see if it can conform with the radius as its minimum according to BS7671. Make a nice smooth bend. Straighten that one up. So I'm looking to make a nice smooth 90 degree bend. I can be a fraction tighter than that, so let's pull it in a little bit more. And we're looking to set our bend like 
So it probably needs a little bit more work. I can't quite get myself in the right angle to stay out of shot. So we're trying to work out a smooth 90 degree bend and all of that radius will conform to the minimum allowed by BS7671. And we can see that we're conforming to that by producing a bend like so. It can't be any tighter than that. That's as tight as the bend can be, but it can be considerably bigger than that and still obviously conform to BS7671. Let's have a look at a different type of cable. So let's now. look at steel wire armoured cable next. So steel wire armoured is still in this top section here, thermoplastic and thermoset in PVC. But this time we're in the section which says armoured and it's any and has a factor of six to be applied to a steel wire armoured cable. We still need to measure the outside diameter of the cable. And I get my learners to annotate their on-site guide by drawing the end of a steel wire armoured and noting it's the major axes to be the diameter of the cable. Okay, so let's now measure a steel wire armoured cable. So let's take a steel wire armoured cable and measure the maximum diameter of the cable. So we've got a diameter at its widest point of, I've got 14 millimetres. So we're gonna take that measurement of 14 millimetres for the diameter of the cable, multiply it by six to create a radius. A radius, we draw a circle, and then we can work out the minimum internal radii of the bend of steel wire armoured cable. Let's do that next. So we need to work out the internal radius for the steel wire armoured by R radius equals the diameter of the cable multiplied by the factor. That becomes radius equals, and we measure the diameter to be 14 millimetres, multiplied by the factor which is six, mean the radius that we'll need to draw will be 84 millimetres. So we take our ruler again and our compass and we set it to 84 and draw a circle. Okay, highlight the center and the radius there, which was 84. Give ourselves a point for starting. And then we make our bend accordingly. So take our steel wire armoured and our bending radius must fit that just like so, giving us an internal bending radii that doesn't exceed the requirements of BS7671. In this case, it was an 84 millimetre radius that we drew with our circle and created a bending radius around the outside of it for our steel wire armoured cable. Let's move on to MICC cable next. Next, we're gonna work out the bending radiuses of mineral insulated cable, MICC, mineral insulated copper covered. Exactly the same as we did with the steel wire armoured. We're gonna measure the diameter of the cable. We'll measure the diameter to be, its major axis once again to be seven millimetres. I go back to D5, table D5, in order to work out the factor to be applied. As I scroll down now, I can see the mineral insulated cable is our bottom one. As I move across, I can see the factor of six is to be applied. However, there is a double asterisk there. The double asterisk says if the mineral insulated cable is to be bent only once and not reworked, you can use a factor of just three. I still get my learners just to be aware of that, but actually we're gonna put a bending radii with the factor of three as the process. And we do seven times six. Um, in order to work out its radius in the next part of the presentation. But to be aware, if it was only to be worked once, you can apply a factor of three. Let's see the bending radius in the next part. So once again, to work out the radius of the circle we're going to draw, we do R equals D, which was seven, times the factor, which was six. The radius is seven times six, which is 42 millimeters. Once again, we set our compass up at 42 millimeters. Draw a circle. highlight it a little bit better that being the 42 and now we can perform the internal bending radiuses that's the minimum it can be so in other words the tightest bend it can be if we've got a factor applied of six so I start to make my bend like so we can see how that one sits there so we're looking to produce the minimum internal bending radius, again, radius is diameter times factor. The radius of the circle we drew had a radius of 42 millimetres, and therefore we've got the minimum internal bending radius this time of mineral insulated cable. Hope this video has been some help.